Hello everyone. We're back and we're ready to take care of that lower tooth number 22. Um, as I st stated before, this particular case is a bone level case. We have the upper bridge in, not cemented, no x-ray taken yet. We just adjusted the occlusion so that we're light and bite. Let me turn up the light again. We want to lighten the load on the ponic. We want a little heavier on the bicuspid. And we definitely want contact on the cuspid. So first by cuspid, left side will both be in contact. We're going to score the surface on this lower cuspid. We're doing this without anesthetic. And we're going to add a layer of composite down here. And hopefully bond as much as we can to this uh, enamel, building the strength. And end up, um, bite down together. We're going to end up with... Uh, material filling the void in here and give him give him something where he can grind left and right on these two particular teeth uh, 21 and 22 so that they disclude his his left side and still keeping it force distributed distributed to uh, through the two teeth numbers 21 and 22 okay all right so let's go ahead and we'll score the surface of 22 first and just scratch it up a little bit. And I don't want to make it any higher on this side in case he has a crossover interference. Alright, looking good. A lot of you use rubber dams out there. For this, I don't see really I'm going to be in and out, but I do need to have him close later into his natural bite so that I can cure it right where it is. So we'll do a little bit of overlapping here with material, but I don't want to cause any trauma. Okay, so let's rinse that off. Okay. Great, now we're going to go ahead and use the phosphoric acid. Total etch system. Okay, good. I'll let it go a little bit more. Alright, we're good. Just rinse that for a good 15 seconds. Okay, now we're going to add the chelator tubulicid, and we'll just drop in a uh, saliva ejector next. And I'll do the tubulicid. I usually let that tubulicid red just hang on the tooth for about 15 seconds, and we'll go right into uh, dentin bonding next. Just going to add consecutive layers of this primer, and in between the uh, three to four coats, we'll suction off any of the uh, solvents that are used to transfer this material. All right, and again, we'll just dry that lightly, dry that surface, perfect. And then the next step is to add the dentin bonding resin. I happen to use All Bond 3. I'm pretty comfortable with All Bond 2 for many years. And then the company said, let's go with 3. You'll be happy or happier. So I went with 3. And so far, two to three years of using the All Bond 3, I'm very comfortable with the results. And minimizing post-operative discomfort, especially under buildups, crowns. I'm ready to light cure that.
cuspid. I'm going to use a little bit of, uh, okay, I'm going to try to do this all in one piece. Here we go. I'm stacking it in place. I'm going to use a little bit of visor seal as a wetting agent, unfilled resin. And just kind of adapt that to that surface because we want uniformity. We want the patient not to realize there's even a filling there. So we're going to continue to. And we'll brush that on. I like to use my finger at times just because it's a flat surface, it spreads everything like a pancake. I need that in focus. Uh, okay. And we have that Hollenbeck again. That's good. Just need to move it a little bit more. A sable brush sometimes works a little better. I don't have a sable brush with me right now, but that can really help the situation. Okay. So we got one chance. Jo Dr. Joel, just and uh, what I want to do is uh, once you once you close, just stay closed and I'll cure it. But I want to put a little separator right here. Okay, so a little lubricant, please. That color looks pretty decent, so I'm gonna stay with that. I'll put the lubricant there. Okay, my light's ready, my shield's ready, and I need you to go ahead and close all the way down and stay closed. So we know we're at least the s surface, flat surface, uh, match to the to the bridge. Now I'd like you to open for me. I'll cure it by hand. Again, oh, we should be curing the lower, not the upper. Excuse me. <laughs> I beg your pardon. <laughs> and what I like to do is to to um, put the side just slightly into light contact and centric, but to pick up the uh, labial contours of this tooth and the adjacent tooth number 21 at the same time so that they're even in disclusion. And then you have to monitor these cases over time because you know they're ankylosed, the bridges are ankylosed, so you're going to need to monitor the occlusion during hygiene, especially if you start to see little minor wear facets occurring on either arch. You might have to go back in and adjust the occlusion again over time, preventing any um, long-term fracture problems and, and, and issues. So right now we'll, we'll turn up the light and show you exactly what this looks like before I do any trimming. So you have a, the negative of the upper. Here it is. So you got all this little excess to trim away and polish. And then basically we're going to leave this little bit out of occlusion along with this surface here. And then when we're finished this will all be highly polished. You'll be able to disclude the occlusion um, off of the implant bridge uh, supporting this whole left side. So muscles will coordinate properly. Certainly will get less stress on these front teeth. You can see how they're badly worn down on the back and try to uh, eliminate um, this problem from occurring. And later on we'll fill these in over time with just some normal composite. For now uh, this is uh, Dr. Jerry Cuomo and my patient Joel and uh, wonderful assistant wishing you all a very happy St. Patrick's Day out there and uh, Jennifer has been with me a while and Maria and the whole staff of wonderful people I'm with and I can't do it without them. Um, so enjoy your day and um, catch us on YouTube again. We look, to, look forward to, to answering any and all questions. Take care.